you've got to get to his division. Um, God opened up the flesh and made two, male and female, which they are to be one. So then number, we looked at number uh, three, which is a picture of the Godhead. Look at all these things in the universe that represent God. Light has three parts. Do you see that? You know, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, time, past, present, future, matter, protons, neutrons, electrons, uh, man, body, soul, spirit, family, father, mother, children. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The whole universe has the imprint of God. You have the earth, you have, you have the heavens, you have space, and you have the third heaven. It all has the imprint of the Godhead all over it. And if you understand even the zodiac, does anybody know the biblical name for the zodiac? Maseroth. When you see the word Maseroth, it's zodiac when you study it out. That's the 12 signs. We all grew up that that's bad. Nah, don't touch the zodiac. It's bad stuff. They'll get you into witchcraft and all that stuff. No, it was really good. God put it there. It's a story revealing the plan of redemption. Virgo, a virgin woman bearing precious seed. Oh, duh, who's that? That's Jesus Christ and Mary. They make it Hercules. But when you study Hercules out, he was half man, half God. He came to this earth, died, went to hell to free the souls from hell. Duh, who's that really? That's Jesus Christ. He fought Medusa, the snake woman. Who's the snake? Oh, Satan. See, they've taken what is good, the world, Babylon, and Greek, and made it bad so that we'll miss the truth. And I know some guys in Kansas City who have what they call an, astro an astronomy club. And they'll go out to the park, and they'll study the, the, the 12 signs and all the stuff that goes with it, and they're witnessing the people out of the public park through the Zodiac, mm -hmm. which is why it's there. That's Ezekiel 20 and verse 11 in action. And you go all the way around and it progressively tells a story. And it gets back to the last one, Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And you've got the Sphinx, which is really a cherub. And I cover all that in my book. But it's just so amazing how God has placed it right there for us. And if we're not careful, we can be so uptight spiritually that we say, I can't look at that stuff. It's just bad. So we gotta we we gotta be careful. Yeah. I was just gonna comment too before you move off of three is that another unique thing is all of the all of man's body systems are in groups of three. Mm -hmm. We've got his imprints all over the place. And for a scientist not to see it, it really blows my mind. I, it's just amazing to me how scientists who study this all the time and understand you've got to have order. And and they think all this stuff came without order. Mm -hmm. It just, it just boggles the mind. The and best illustration I ever heard against that, Mark, was mm -hmm. that you take a Timex watch, disassemble it into a thousand pieces, put it up in a sack, shake it around a half a dozen times, open the sack, throw it out across the yard, and it's going to reassemble itself and, and live again. It'd be easier for that to happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, that's a good, that's a good illustration. And you got it. You know, the world is orderly, and you, mm -hmm. you got it. Just logically thinking, something of order had to put that there. So. You know, then you have to make up your mind what is that powerful being that put it there and that's what the battle seems to be today number four um, that one's a tricky one but as you study it out four it talks about the four winds and the four horns of the altar and, it, and since the wind is a picture of the Holy Spirit and he's powerful and four seems to be picturing the power of God going north, south, east and west it's everywhere the power of God is all encompassing and the horn of the altar, horns were used to call the armies. And when you study all of those types, it seems like it's God's power is everywhere. Um, number five, we looked at that. That's um, death slash grace. Remember when David was fighting Goliath, he went to the uh, stream and got how many smooth stones? Five. He put them in his pouch. That pouch is also something symbol symbolic. You need to study that. And he had to, only took one and took down Goliath with it, with it. And when you understand what Goliath really was, he wasn't just a big man of nine feet tall. Mm -hmm. There was something going on there worldwide, Satan trying to infiltrate the bloodline of the line of Christ. He was a powerful creature and was one small stone. And remember, David didn't get in Saul's armor because he hadn't done what to it? Tested it. He knew his weapons. 
It was so interesting. I taught on that last week, and then uh, Marty gets up there and talks about the same thing. I thought that was pretty cool. But we got to use what we're good at. I'm, you know, you all have your special gifts that I don't have, and I can't use those as well. I need to try, but I need to really focus on the ones I'm good at and to get better at the ones I'm not good at. Um, so five is death and grace. Um, the devil has five letters. Satan has five letters. Judas has five letters. Beast has five letters. Pride has five letters. Rebel has five letters. Satan had five I wills in Isaiah chapter 14. It's just all there. People can look at this and say, I don't believe it. Okay, fine. That's your choice. Really. I'm just throwing it out to you. It's up to you to make up your mind if you really want to pay attention to what God's trying to teach. And again, why are we learning this stuff? What's the ultimate reason we're learning how to study the Bible? So we can tell other people. Yes. When you sit down and talk to someone who doesn't understand the Bible, you can say, let me talk to you about the tongues issue. Boom, 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 boom. Now, the Holy Spirit is interjected because you're using the Word of God, and it's not you that's arguing with them, it's the Holy Spirit that's got a chance to tug on their soul. And say, okay, let's get this thing squared away so we don't cause confusion. Wherever the issue might be, if it's a Roman Catholic or a Mormon or a Job's Witness or a Christian that's struggling, we have to know how to study the Bible and rightly divide it. We can't give personal opinion. People don't care what you think. But even now, even today, people still have a little bit of respect for the Bible. They might not believe it, but they still have some respect for it. They know that you're speaking with an authority higher than yourself. Because even in this world, it's called Gnosticism or Relativism. They believe everybody, if you believe, if you believe what you believe enough, you're going to go to a good place. So they don't totally discount you. So be careful to use the Bible when you talk to them because you bring in an authority heart lot bigger than yourself. Even when you're talking to someone stooped in this relativistic ideology. Um, even in uh, present applications, when a dead is uh, when a ship is dead in the water, they use the number five for shutdown. <laughs> it's just uh, May Day. May is the fifth day of the month. It's just interesting how all this thing kind of fits together. Um, death is five letters, and grave is five letters. Now six we looked at is the number of man. God created man on the what day? Sixth day. The Antichrist is a counterfeit of Christ, so he's six six six. Perfection is seven, so he's almost there, but he's not there. And sick word sick, and of course it's 666. He's trying to duplicate the deity of Christ. Um, that's number six. And we, we have a lot, of, we've already went over a lot of stuff. Seven, perfection, completeness. We've all heard lucky seven. All of, all of this stuff you have in history seems to come from the Bible anyway. They just kind of switch it and pervert it a little bit. The first mention is Genesis 2 1 through 2. God rested because creation was complete, it wasn't because he was tired. God doesn't get tired. It pictures the 7,000 years of human history. And I believe that. I believe that the six days of, uh, I call it the restoration, the six days of, of the creation, um, and then the seventh day being of rest is picturing the, the uh, millennial kingdom. The seventh day is a type of the millennial kingdom. So in, what does the Bible say? One day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So we're setting a the type there. And I believe man's going to have 6,000 years, man, six. He's going to give man 6,000 years to get things right. They're going to realize they need Christ, and then the millennial kingdom will come.